Hi everyone, Jennifer Galindo here with Mission CISD and thank you for joining us for another episode of House Calls. And once again, we are joined with Dr. Stinson with the Center of Primary Care and Wellness. So thank you, Dr. Stinson, for being here and sharing your expertise with us today. And today we're gonna to be talking about cancer prevention and some of the screenings that are available. So Dr. Stinson, can you share a little bit about what kind of um, cancer screenings or cancer prevention is available and maybe at what ages are good for someone to um, begin those screenings? Sure. So um, we're still not very advanced uh, as we'd like to be in, in preventing cancer. We still have, cancer still is, uh, one of our biggest killers and uh, one of the things that devastates families. It, it's very frustrating as a doctor because when you, somebody on your patients gets cancer and it just comes very, the, the, from the time we diagnose to the time it may take their lives, it's a very short period a lot of times. So it's very scary. Um, and unfortunately we don't have as much cancer prevention uh, today as I think many of us when we we're younger doctors thought we would be. So we do have three major uh, ways, uh, major, three major cancers that we are having a good success with. Uh, cervical cancer, which uh, we've, back in the 60s, we, we, we came up with a, the, the pap smear. It used to be the annual pap smear that looks at cervical cancer. Um, that was very important because cervical cancer, it, it, it is a killer. Uh, good thing about it is a slow cancer. It, 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 we see it very early on. It's, it's come, it takes years to develop. Um, so, but, and we would do an annual, annual pap smear. That's where we take a, a little bit of a, of, of, of a swipe of the cells. They come off very easy. We send them off the pathologist and he looks and sees if there's any cancer cells or, or not. And then we go, and if it's, we t catch it early, we're able to get rid of it, um, right then and there. The, um, they've actually, uh, learned since it's such a slow growing cancer and uh, over the decades, we now have. Uh, change that to, from doing your year, yearly uh, pap smear. So now they do it every three years uh, up to the age, I always, whether it's 35 or 30, but up to the age of, of, of let's say 35, you do it every three years. And then after that, it's every five years. And they really say, um, and at the age of 65, you can stop screening. So that's nice. Uh, women don't have to go every single year. Uh, some women do though, but really the, the, it's such a slow cancer that's, that the, the research has shown that we don't have to do it as often as we thought we did. Um, the next one is, is uh, for women also is breast cancer. Breast cancer is, is still, uh, it's a lot more common than several cancer. Uh, we are still uh, learning a little bit more about how to screen it. Uh, there's been very little difference though of our screening process in the last uh, 50 years. Uh, we mammograms, low dose radiology on, on the breast. Uh, we do you do that every year from starting from the age of 40 for all women. Regard it, that's just all women in general. Certain women have family cancer, family breast cancer uh, histories. Uh, they're just uh, and you'll know if your your mother, your grandmother, sisters then they ha if they have a cancer very young, you have to go to the doctor and there's a couple of uh, blood tests that we can do to see if you have that familial breast cancer gene. And if that you do have that gene, then we, the vigilance is greater. Um, so that, that's, uh, those are done with, with uh, geneticists and, the, and uh, who will help you with that and then oncologists will help. But typically, most women aren't, aren't thank God, most women aren't in that category. So it's just basically start age of 40, every year get your mammogram, and that we'll, we'll catch it early. And if we catch it early, we take, we take out the tumor, and it, you, you go on with life. Um, the, uh, if you do have just a family member that had cancer uh, at a younger age, I believe it's still the guidelines are you do it, you do start your breast cancer screening 10 years before that person in your family had breast cancer. Um, the other cancer that we that's been in my career was changed when I was a young doctor. We didn't do any screening, and in the '90s we started doing this was was colon cancer screening. Uh, we started by doing colonoscopies. That was the big change, doing colonoscopies, and you do that at, every 10 years, starting at the age of 50. We did that. They they changed it to now every, at the age of 45 is when you started. Uh, if you have somebody in your family with uh, 
siblings or parents or grandparents with, with uh, colon cancer, then you do it at, at, at uh, 10 years before they develop their cancer. To, so you can, maybe, you know, some people start at the age of 25, start getting a colonoscopy. Um, but, but at the age of 50, with what it used to be now down to age 45, and in the recent years, they've added two other types of screens instead of just a colonoscopy, which is all we did. And that was a hard sell for me. I, 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 it was very important to really drop down the cancer death rates uh, by when we started doing the colonoscopies. But many people uh, didn't want to do it. Finances were involved. Uh, some people just didn't have, uh, they didn't have uh, insurance or their insurance didn't cover it. And it was too expensive for them. So we had a lot of people that, that we weren't able to get screened. And they developed now a couple of tests now that you just do with a stool sample. And you just, we give you a little kit, you take it home, you bring us a little sample back in an envelope, and we send it off to the lab and you do that every year. And that's, that's equal to, to the colonoscopy. Uh, every 10 years you do this every year though. And of course, if that comes out positive, then you do the colonoscopy. And what we're going for in colon cancer screening is we're trying to get those, these little early cancers. They're, they're called polyps. They're not cancer yet, but they can develop to cancer cells, to, can, to uh, cancer tumors. So, uh, so that's what we do with, with, with uh, we have the, the, the cervix, breast, and, and uh, colon cancer. Uh, beyond that, lung cancer, we still haven't found a, a good way to prevent it. Uh, look, Cat scanning on, on people who smoke, we can do, that helps, uh, but there's not a good consensus yet. There's still a lot of debate going on uh, in, in the medical communities of really if, that, if we should be doing that or not, uh, how to do that. Um, but there are a lot of, um, there is a, a subset of our patients that, that I definitely recommend if you've been a smoker for, for a certain period of time, you ask your doctor about that, you, you should qualify for, it, for a, an annual uh, low dose CT scan of the lungs because the x-ray doesn't help. The, um, some people at risk for thyroid cancer, we do want to, they do recommend some, some sonography of that, uh, but really uh, that's not, that, there's not much success in that, in that prevention area. And those are the, the, the major ones. The, um, as far as, what about blood tests? Like I mentioned for breast cancer, for me, there's a, there's a small subset of women that, that do, we can detect uh, their risk early, early and, and be aggressive with them. Uh, but there's really no good blood test out there that just says, do you have cancer? And when you go for your, your annual test and, and you say, well, I get my blood check. A lot of people, I think, feel that, oh, I don't have cancer. And, and, um, I, but no, we don't. We really don't. If, if we detect something in your blood, uh, other than, uh, well, even leukemia, but usually all the, the blood, does, it shows us there's, if there's damage going on because that cancer's already spread. So it's not really a cancer prevention. Um, the le leukemias, you can pick it up early uh, in, in, a, in a complete blood test, so that, that can be, but it's not, we don't do complete blood tests for leukemia. It's just, again, another one of those things, we just, it, it starts developing, it gives us symptoms, and okay, you have that. So it's still very frustrating. Uh, there, is a, there is on the horizon uh, a lot of hope uh, what's going on in research, and it's, it looks solid, and it looks like, uh, it, you know, I don't know, it, it's uh, I, things I thought would happen you know, a long time ago haven't happened, uh, and other things that I never thought would happen have occurred. So I hope that these what's, what we see on this research, what they're looking into, soon we'll have be able to detect, uh, with a blood test, or we'll be able to detect if there's early cancer that we can't even see yet, but we can identify where it's at and start you know, aggressively looking into it. Um, the one controversial thing about uh, is prostate cancer. That's, um, we thought we had a, a blood test for that. Uh, it was mistakenly uh, 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 thought of, uh, confusion back uh, a few decades ago. And the PSA testing now we know is not really a screen. Um, so we've they've taken that away from our cancer prevention what we used to do every year for men now it's not we now know it doesn't really uh, detect early cancer we still use PSAs for people that have cancer uh, and have treated we kind of use that to, to 
to to to watch out for for any spread afterwards. But as far as just screening men for for prostate cancer, like we thought we were doing, it, it we don't do that anymore. So that was an unfortunate uh, you know, that, that we we would that we thought we had something screening early detection of prostate cancer. It turned out it really wasn't. Um, and I get now. Now, what can we do as far as uh, can I do anything? Can you do anything to get, decrease your risk of cancer? Well, smoking, of course, is uh, one of the biggies. Um, they we we think that maybe uh, high fat meals uh, can create a little bit more problems with with colon cancer. That's still uh, that's not it's not really proven. It's this. There's been some thought in that, some some research that kind of it was weak. Sleep is very important. Get sleep, uh, do some exercise uh, every day. Uh, do a minimum 30, 30 minutes of exercise every day, and uh, make sure you have a good immune system by with nutrition. Now, it doesn't mean that food's going to make you better or worse. Uh, what I say is that feed yourself often. So make sure you have your 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 breakfast every morning. Something. And then you have a, a snack in the mid morning. Have your lunch. Have a snack in the mid afternoon and your evening. So having like several meals a day helps boost your immune system. So it not only helps you fight against you know infections, but it helps you fight against cancer too. Well, it sounds like it's really important to make your screenings. You know, whenever you are able to make them at your certain age. And then one thing I'd like to add, because I know there's a few people like myself who sometimes get scared to go in because they're like oh, you know, they're going to find something and then what? Or like, what are the next steps? What would you say to, you know, those people who are a little scared to, to go in when, you know, really prevention and catching it early is the most important part of going to those screenings? I think that you don't go in there as a, I'm uh, afraid. You just say, well, you know what? It's my, I'm just going to go see the doctor, get it out of the way. Let my doctor worry about everything. I'm not going to worry about nothing. I'm just, it's in, it's in their hands. And I'm, and I that way I, I can worry less about it. So I, I think it's really whenever you go for your annual visit, your wellness we call it the wellness exam, uh, which includes some blood work, and that's when we go through all these cancer prevention. So we review, at you know, oh if you're 25, what do you need to do at 25? If you're 35, if you're 45, 55, etc. So everybody wants to go in there. We do go, we do look at your age, and we do have a, a, a already a, an idea of what we're going to be testing you for and plus whatever you may bring to us uh, from your family history. Great, so it sounds like if it's caught early, you know, there's there's the steps in place already um, for them to feel comfortable that, you know, it can be taken care of and and they go on living, you know, a wonderful life. Exactly. So that's great. All right, well, Dr. Simpson, thank you again for chatting with us today. And if you guys have any topics you'd like Dr. Simpson to discuss, feel free to leave them in the comments. And until next time, thank you.